get started, we should probably do cheers to a wonderful weekend that we've spent together. Yay! Okay. 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 Cheers. Cheers. cheers! Thank you. Okay. Cheers. So let's dive right in. We are all at very different stages of our life. Yeah. Are we not? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But always, no matter what stage of your life you're at, relationships is always a big part of life and a big part of living with narcolepsy. So I'm looking at Shannon and she's nodding. How's it been being married with narcolepsy? You know, narcolepsy was not part of our plan. <laughs> I was diagnosed with narcolepsy at 34 and it completely changed our lives, but he's been so amazing through it all. So I've been mm -hmm. online dating. Yeah. With more. narcolepsy. Yeah. And for a while I kept the narcolepsy off of my profile then I was like no you know what I'm gonna try an experiment I'm gonna put you know a picture of me holding a narcolepsy not alone sign oh, wow. I met a doctor through there and he wrote right away about how they'd studied narcolepsy in medical school and made a joke about it oh, <laughs> oh no. no oh no oh no I kind of can't take anyone like I thought it was a joke too, right? Right. Yeah. And so even though he went to medical school, I thought, well, that's just something I'll educate him about, which right. I did. Mm -hmm. I think I did do that. So I that's give myself good. a little credit for giving him a second chance, but still. Well, I remember one story. I wasn't diagnosed yet, but I was like 15 or 16, and I had like this one guy, and like, um, um, like he was talking to me, but I was just like dozing off. And then at this one point that I like completely like fell asleep on him, <laughs> like talking. And then like when I leave with my parents, my mom is like, Grissel, do you like so and so? And I'm like, yes, why? Well, you didn't seem that interested. You were asleep the whole time that he was talking to you. And I'm like, I was really tired, so. That's hard. I feel that even with friendships. It is hard. Yeah. I also think sometimes people know you better than you know yourself. I at least am quite grateful to the people who were part of my life before I got the diagnosis for actually picking up on those things, yes. even when I could. Yes. You know, they'd be like, Lisa, you're definitely tired right now, so let's just, just go to bed. Yeah. And I would probably be the one who was a bit stubborn and be like, no, no, I'm fine. So. My best friend knows, like she, she'll look at me and she just knows and she'll mm -hmm. tell me, go in my bedroom, just, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, let us know, we'll take care of Paige. My yeah. daughter, you know, it's been wonderful just to have somebody that gets it. Have you guys gone on a little bit of a journey as far as how open you are about your narcolepsy? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because yeah. you guys are out there now sharing your story. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's... I was very close before and I wanted like to share my family, you know, it was very hard. Like my parents, like, why are you going to put yourself out there? Um, but at the same time, I thought that it was important to put myself and raise awareness and um, to show others, you know, hey, what I was feeling, you know, um, which is just part of me, it's a condition. Mm -hmm. And then now I just, I'm open to, to telling everyone. I think like for me it actually like goes back to dating. It's such a struggle like when do you tell a person that you have narcolepsy? Mm -hmm. And for me it's like such a recent thing that you know I left medical school and I'm starting on this new career path so of course like it comes up like yes. why do you leave medical school? Yes. So I thought about it like you know should I like make something up or should <laughs> yeah. I tell the truth and, and it's weird because you're just meeting this person for the very first time and struggling whether or not to tell them like this really personal thing about you right um but i just decided that i would just be myself you know if the person couldn't handle it then they're probably not the person for me yes, yes. it's like a really easy test in a way definitely i can't imagine having to start dating like I, I was married for several years when I found out so do you always feel this open I think it took me over a year to talk about it without crying after I was diagnosed because I just felt broken I didn't know what I had now I know what I have and it's not going away there's no cure people just don't know what narcolepsy is and so that's been a struggle is trying to get like the truth out there because it is so stigmatized because of what is in the media I say still to this day Every time I mention it, you know, it comes up all the time, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I think, as soon as I say the word narcolepsy, I still feel a tightness in my stomach. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the next thing that's coming? 
And so I thought recently, like, just to bypass that moment and not stop, just be like, oh, well, because I have narcolepsy, just steamroll through it and go, it's actually a condition that's really misunderstood. You've probably seen it in movies, but it's actually like this. <laughs> and not give yeah. them that second for their reaction because yeah. actually we're the expert, they're not. Yeah. So, True. But I, that moment, right, where it's like, yeah. oh, what are they going to think? What are they going to say? Right. I found that my really close friends when I was diagnosed had the same reaction as I did, which was, what is narcolepsy then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which to me was the exact right reaction. Right. And not some projection about fainting goats, but rather if you have this thing, then what the heck is it? And I've been trying to encourage people for for narcolepsy and for other diseases to try to right. approach their friends with curiosity rather than with their preconceived notions. For me, the best response that a friend can have to finding out that I have narcolepsy were people saying, you know what, Shanna, I looked it up and can I ask you a few questions? The fact that they took the moment to even look into it mm -hmm. was just so heartwarming for me. And you know that someone truly cares about you if they're willing to go that step. I can see sitting on the other side of that conversation. Because sure. um, you hear narcolepsy and you don't know anything about it. It's like, how bad is it? Like, how should I react? Right. So one thing that I do actually is like, when I tell someone I have narcolepsy, I ask them like, uh, what do you know about it? Right. So then they feel like free to ask questions about it. Oh, yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's, that's cool. really good because then you can also relate and be like, that's what I thought too, but turns out that yes. it's this completely other thing. So then you're on the same page. Mm -hmm. I like that. Almost. I had this one friend who gave me the best response ever. I think I was confessing I found it a little bit difficult to tell people. Sure. And he just looked at me, he's like, it's basically like you're coming out of the closet yeah, with yeah. narcolepsy. <laughs> and True. in that sentence, I understood him so much better. It was an aspect of him that I hadn't had the courage to explore with him and how difficult his experience coming out of the closet had been. I, I, I kind of love that expression, coming out of the closet with narcolepsy. Yeah. Not sure like if it sums up everyone else's experiences or is totally appropriate, but it coming from him meant so much to me.